I've spoken to the leaders, and so you're going to be hearing from different leaders on a rotation. And so Christina is going to be doing a series on, uh, on finances and faith. And so stay tuned for that because you'll get more information. And um, many of you have requested also to hear from Pastor Jones. And I thank God that he's with us here this morning. Pastor Jones, we love you and we've missed you and I'm glad to see you back. But um, some of you like hearing from Pastor Jones and we're going to hear from him next month, Lord willing. So we have a lot of incredible leaders and sometimes it's great to just hear from different perspectives and hear that the Lord is using somebody and hear their story and their testimony. Last week, Josh gave us his testimony about the miracles that God has done in his life. And I thank God for that. After being shot and, and pronounced dead a few times, he, you know, he believes in God. He was in a wheelchair. He walked up out of that wheelchair by faith and hasn't returned to that wheelchair ever since. So it's just a powerful thing to hear from other people that God is using, that God is raising up. And the word of God tells us that they overcame by the blood of the lamb, the word of their testimony. And so will you stand to your feet this morning as Christina comes to share the word of the Lord and just give her a big, nice hand of appreciation this morning. Can y'all just keep your hands together for Pastor Ken Wen and Sister Andrews? I always like to give honor where honor is due. And, um, you know, I, I late night, y'all can have a seat. I'm sorry. <laughs> Many times I hear my husband and pastor um, talking and planning, and, and I can't even imagine um, the amount of uh, just pressure it takes to be a pastor, right? Because you're taking on not only a church, but you're just taking on everything that comes with that. And so I just want to thank you this morning, Pastor Ken Wynn. Um, this is Pastor Appreciation Month, actually. And um, we just honor and praise you. Just thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for your guidance. You know, when Jesse brought me here a year and so ago, <laughs> I said, what are we doing in Christmas? <laughs> and, um, and I quickly quickly realized that we had a calling and a purpose here, and I'm so thankful that you made the call to him um, and allowed us to, to come and serve here at this church. Uh, next, I want to just honor my husband for a moment. <laughs> woo, woo, woo! <laughs> uh, I thank God for him because, you know, I'm only standing here because of him. I always, you know, I, I, again, honor what honor is due. He's my husband, head of our household, so anytime I'm going to share, I always lean on him first. And he's just a great man of God. I mean, he gets up every morning, like, super early and prays. And then I have to feel bad, so I got to get up and pray early, even though I'm not a morning person. But, uh, <laughs> and listen, and then that's the other thing. He is super private, right? And I'm very, you know, if you know me, I can tell you everything, and I have no problem sharing and so, um, so we just really compliment each other well. So thank you, husband. I appreciate you today. And I also just last but not least, I want to thank my family. My two children are here, Miracle and Kendall. Can you just wave, guys? So these are my children. You know, they are my labor of love. They are where my, my blood, sweat, and tears go. Um, but they have actually served with me in ministry since the day I got them. Um, and I mean, when I say serve in ministry, my children slept at the church some nights, <laughs> okay? They literally, we grabbed our sleeping bags and the pillow, and I said, come on, I got stuff to do, and you're going to be right here with me. And so they did it. I won't say they didn't always complain, but they always, always came, and I just thank God that you're here today. Amen. Amen. All right, can I just going to pray for just a second? Lord, I just thank you this morning. I ask that you just open up our hearts and minds this morning, dear God. As we hear from your word this morning, Lord, this is not about me. I want to take self out the way and let you have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. Whatever you are downloading into me today, Father God, whatever you've downloaded over this last week, Father God, just use me as your vessel this morning. I came to teach a word, Lord God, and I just thank you in advance for that opportunity to share share it with your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all always got to know it's not about us. It's not about me at all. Everything that comes today is, is my meditation on the word, and so I am um, just thankful and honored today. All right, I'm going to start. I mean, you actually mentioned Paul, Apostle Paul, this morning, uh, a little bit in your giving and uh, statement this morning, and so I, that's actually where I am going to start today um, is with Apostle Paul, and I'm going to be reading from Philippians today. And 
here's the thing, you know, if you, if you know the story of Apostle Paul, and I don't have time to teach it all, I promise you, I wish I did, but I don't, but, but I really want to focus on Philippians um, and, and what he said in Philippians. See, Paul, Paul actually wrote two pieces before this, right? But they, it's believed that in that teaching, he was actually writing those things in crisis. But when you get to Philippians, he starts to, to, to change, and, and he's talking to the Philippi, and he's really just grateful. And I'm thinking to myself as I'm reading his word, now Paul is sitting in jail. Now, how many people know you're sitting in jail, you're desperate, you're in despair, right? But here is Paul writing this gracious and just appreciation for the Philippi and for God and really just, just coming out of a place of, of what may have been darkness, but he's just praising God the whole time he is there. And so my story, the reason I always teach about faith and finance, my story really represents that walk and that journey through my life. Now, there's a lot of great verses that come out of Philippians. Many of y'all know Philippians 4, 4, 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or Philippians 4, 6, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. But this morning, I am going to focus on Philippians 4, 19, and it's up on the screen for you guys. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. Anybody believe it this morning that he can supply all of your needs? Not a little bit, not just some of them, but all of your needs, right? Amen. So if it's all right, I, I love that the past few weeks, pastors allowed a couple of people to share their testimony. And so that's really where I'm going to start this morning is with my testimony. And I want to share just my process in walking through um, this, this faith and finance with God. So first and foremost, I grew up in a pretty great household. Um, you know, I had amazing parents. I really never experienced anything bad or tragic in my life. I, I, you know, we didn't go to church every Sunday, but I knew my parents loved the Lord. Um, but we didn't, we weren't actively involved in church. It wasn't until I got into college that uh, somebody brought me to church and, and I just got, you know, filled and I was just on fire for God at that point in time. But how many people know sometimes you come to the Lord gradually and sometimes something happens in an instant in somebody's life, and it, it kind of shifts everything. And then that's when they go to the Lord, right? And so, you know, my 20s were good. I got married. We adopted three beautiful children. Um, so things just seemed to all be kind of coming together. I was running a business. And then for me, what happened as I got into my 30s, probably my major first tragedy in life happened. I said I adopted three children, and you see two sitting here today. My 13-year-old adopted son committed suicide. So I, at a time where I am serving faithfully to God, I'm a youth pastor in our church, my 13-year-old son at that time committed suicide. I literally just had to really fall to my knees and trust God through that entire process. Um, my family is watching me. You know, my church family is watching me. But it was a hard, hard thing to get through, right? I don't, you know, I know there's parents in the household. That this, this is one thing. It is so hard. One of the, the hardest deaths they say from a family member is a, to watch a child die. So, we walk through this, and, and let me tell you, right now, that's kind of a, a an epidemic really going on with our young people. We have to pray for them. The young people sit in the back. The young people sit in the front here. We have to pray for them. I just got noticed yesterday um, about a, a young, this is the third year in a row that somebody at my child's school has committed suicide. You used to never hear about that happening with children at all. And it seems like it's happening more and more and more. And a lot of people know my testimony, so they connect with me and the mom. And, and I know that's where that growth over time has come for me. But then, right, so, you know, I'm, it's about two years later. I've gotten through the hardest part of the struggle. I've gotten some counseling. I've, I've sat with my pastors. They really embraced us at that point in time. Two and a half years later, my niece is visiting my, my parents, their, her grandparents, um, and she falls in the pool and she drowns at just under two years old. My mother, I don't think, ever forgave herself. I could watch both of my parents struggle for the next year. 
as they, they tried to deal with the, the loss of their grandchild, right? So about a year and a half later, my mother gets sick, and at 59 years old, she passes away unexpectedly. So now, you know, I've lost my mother. For many of us, our moms are our backbone, right? They're really like the people we lean on the most. So, my, you know, I've lost my mother. She's like my backbone. She's the one I go to for everything. My aunt steps in, and, and she's really trying to help me and um, counsel me and, and truthfully just love on me because I just needed a mother's love at that point, right? And about six months after my mom passes away, the same aunt calls me and tells me she's been diagnosed with cancer. And in her first chemotherapy treatment, has a stroke, and she dies six months later. Now, you would think that this story is, I mean, at what point are we going to end? At this point, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm like Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me, right? Even Jesus had his moment of despair. That doesn't mean he didn't trust God. He just had a moment of despair. So a few months later, my stepfather, uh, again, still dealing with my my. My mother, I, my mother and father had adopted, y'all seen a lot of them here, Zach and Seth, and, but my mother and father had adopted, after all of us grew up, a family of six. So they adopted this family of six, and they be instantly became our brothers and sisters, right? And, and we love on them, and we, you know, I thought, okay, they're going to be over there, and I'm over here, you know, <laughs> and I go visit them and pick them up sometimes and go back and forth, and they're living with my dad at this point, and he also gets diagnosed with cancer. And I slowly watch him deteriorate, so do they, okay? And about a year after that, he passes away. Again, you think I'm done, <laughs> right? I've been through a lot. That's a lot already. While my father is in his last stages of, of cancer, and we're still believing God for a miracle, I'm still praying, my older brother calls me up and says, you know, I'm um, having some liver issues, I th you know, probably going to need a transplant. Um, he really wasn't very forthcoming with, with how sick, but definitely said, you know, I'm sick and, and we're probably going to need to do something. I'm not sure, you know, exactly all the details. But within a month, he deteriorates very quickly. Um, a f we didn't, couldn't find a liver in time. He has special blood type, those different things. My 45-year-old brother passes away. So again, you think I'm done, <laughs> right? So my God, this is all happening over a period of about five or six years. Meanwhile, through this, this being transparent with you guys and honest, I go through a divorce. Losing a child is hard on a relationship already, but we just, you know, there were some things going on in our relationship, so we went through that. I'm going through, honestly, just financial despair. If anybody's been through a divorce before, you know, sometimes that just changes things financially, right? I'm trying to take care of two kids. In addition to that, you know, my mother passed away, my father passed away, my brother passed away. We've got several funerals we're dealing with. So there's just a lot of expenses going out, a lot of things happening. And even though I was good about my finances in my 20s, I start to find myself slowly putting out money left and right, and that's just dwindling down, right? So past this divorce, past, you know, some of these deaths, I, I start, um, this is before I met my husband, I uh, start dating a young man that I met, and, you know, seems like things are, are going really well, and, and, you know, again, one thing after the other. Um, long story short, at 40 years old, he has a massive heart attack. They call it a widow's maker. One afternoon, and he passes away. So all these people that I have depended on, that I have loved on, that I have trusted, right? I'm thinking to myself, where, who do I depend on now? Because I think in this process, not only was I going through a faith battle, right? How many people know, like at some point, sometimes you're going through things that you just ask God, why is this happening to me? Am I the only one that's been there, right? Right? Why is this happening to me? What did I do? Here I have served faithfully. I am the youth pastor at my church with my husband at the time. I am a faithful tither. I am here every time the doors open. What is going on? 
And it's really where God revealed to me this Philippians 4, 19. My God shall supply all of my needs. And I had to stand on that word. And at time, you know, I say all the time, people come to God sometimes when they're suffering. That is when they want and need God the most. It's a time where they really have to walk through some of the hardest things of lives. And, and again, in this community, I know even in our own families, sometimes we go through such tragedies. But we have to walk through that to get a little closer to God. Amen? Amen. All right, I told you all the bad stuff, all right? <laughs> I had to get that part out first. I did it without crying. My kids will be proud of me about that, okay, because usually I can't, okay? I did it without crying, but I want to say, though, my God, my God. <laughs> a lot of times people ask me, how did you go through all that? How are you still smiling? I meet mothers all the time who have lost children. I realize that this is someplace God called me, right? Because I trusted him, and I still found joy in every situation. I am so glad that Versace was part of our life. That was our, the oldest of the group. I am so glad because guess what? I got to experience motherhood for that. I got to really understand and know that these children weren't just accidentally placed with me. This is something God did for me. My parents, I had great parents, right? You know when you have great parents and they pass away, you really, like something, you feel like something's missing, but you realize that the whole time they gave you everything you needed? My parents gave me everything I needed to be able to walk through that process. Amen? And then when I struggled and I wasn't sure which way to go and I was, you know, really just broken, I was able to lean on God. And he restored a joy that surpasses all understanding. Come on. Anybody been to that part where the joy is? There's a part where the joy is. If you haven't been there, right, and I'm just being honest, if you haven't been there, that's where you're trying to get to. There's a peace that God will give you that, that really surpasses all understanding. Amen? Amen. So, I talked about a little bit about just that was my faith test, right? That was what I walked through. And when I think about it, you know, God really, it was a test, but I think the enemy was trying to test me, right? Like, oh, well, God, well, God didn't do this. Well, God didn't do that. Well, God didn't do this, right? How about all things work together for our greater good? Amen? There's plenty of us that have lost people in this room. Anybody? Anybody lost somebody close to you in the room? We all have lost somebody close to you, right? But I think as you begin to just love on people around you, you know, I think about all those things that happened to me. But then I look at my kids, and I think about it also happened to them. So when I knew that I had to get past it, it wasn't for my glory. It wasn't for what I'm going to do for it. It was for God's glory. It was so that these children can see that there is a God that we serve that is greater, bigger, and beyond me or you. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask that you go to the next slide. So the definition of faith, the definition of faith, right? If you read the definition of faith here, you guys can all read it, right? I'm not going to repeat it for you, but you can all see it, right? Who in your life can you trust? Who in your life do you know will always be there? Now, I know the answer we always think of is God, right? But is that really the first thing that always comes to your head? Always the, the very first thing that God is saying to you? Next slide. Who do you have faith in? Who do you have faith in? Who can you depend on 100% all the time? So for me, growing up, it was my parents, right? Then it became my spouse. Sometimes it's my children. <laughs> you know, I recently had surgery. I had to depend on them, right? I'm calling my daughter like, can you come wash my hair? <laughs> you know? And, you know, without hesitation, sure, Mom, I'll be right there. Right? Who can you depend on? Who do you have faith in? But I do want you to think about what if that person wasn't there? And even if you get to the next person, what if that person wasn't there? There is one person that will always be there no matter what. 
There is a king of king and a lord of lords that will always be there no matter what. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you from experience. It doesn't matter how much despair you're in. It doesn't matter if nothing seems to follow the direction that you're trying to get it to go into. There is a king that will be there every time you need him. You just have to have faith. And listen, this ain't in our time, right? Because, see, sometimes that's where we go to. Oh, well, I depended on God, and he hasn't showed up yet. <laughs> well, it's not your time, Pastor Kenwin. It's not my time. It's not your time, Jesse. It's God's time. And guess what? He will do it right on time. Right when you need it is when he'll be there. Deacon John in the back, he's going to be there right at that moment. When you think he isn't going to show up, and he's going to show up bigger and better and badder than you could have ever thought, right? Because God is faithful. He always does what you need him to at the right time. There was times where I really had to search for God and, and look for the blessing. And I remember at the time, you know, my pastors and even even. My, my mother-in-law at the time, I mean, just speaking a word into us, you know, uh, it, it was just little things that I just remember so clearly, but it was just God trying to pierce through all the noise, all the things that were happening. God was saying, hey, I'm here. You don't have to look at it this way. I'm right there. I will be there. Just keep following me. Just keep going forward. Just keep moving. Like I said before, the faith test came first for me. Do I really trust God? Because, man, I was writing some big tithe checks at the time, <laughs> okay? So I was writing these checks, and I'm thinking, man, you know, maybe this money could go better here or there. But how many know that's the enemy? He was just trying to infiltrate and try to get into the little details as far as where I was going to be faithful and what I was going to do. But he, as God opened up my eyes and I really focused on my faith test, so then I'm starting to trust God and believe God. And I'm really, you know, I'm yelling at the enemy. I don't know if y'all ever seen that movie. Y'all seen the movie War Room? Anybody seen it? Where, where the mother's in the house and she's yelling at the enemy to get out of my house. This is not your house. God dwells in this place. She's just screaming at him, right? She's screaming at the enemy. That's what I was doing, right? That was my testimony. I'm walking. I'm talking. I'm yelling out loud. I'm saying, listen, this is God's house. And you will not break my faith, enemy. Amen? So he couldn't break my faith. He started messing with my finances. <laughs> right? How many know the enemy is sneaky? Right? Because if he can't get you one way, if he can't, if he can't break it one way, he's going to try to go a different way. It's going to be in, the, in your relationships or with your marriages. It's going to be in your finances. It's going to be with your kids. My kids know this, <laughs> right? He's going to try to find other ways to infiltrate because you could, he couldn't break you that way. So that was, for me, that was the next test. I was, I was okay. I was telling everybody, listen, this is a faith walk. I'm walking by faith. I'm going to trust God. I'm declaring the word out of my mouth. People are seeing that. Now I'm praying with mothers that have lost their children. They're giving their life to the Lord. So here we go. Now I made the enemy mad. Right? Anybody ever made the enemy mad before? I feel like every time I make the enemy mad, just all hell breaks loose. Right? Every time. It doesn't matter that just all hell breaks loose. So that's what started happening in my finances. So here I had built up the savings. I'm putting money into my 401K. I'm, I'm a tither. And all these things started happening in my family. Right? And now my savings starts to dwindle down a little bit. You know, I need to, now I need to pay for some, help pay for some funerals. That money is starting to come out of my 401K because I've, I've done, dwindled down my savings, right? You know, my parents, when they passed away, we had to go through probate. That lasted about a year. What I didn't tell you in that process is I had my own two kids to take care of. But I told you my parents had adopted a sibling group of six. Well, five of them were still under the age of 18 when both of my parents had passed away. 
So now me and my siblings are looking at each other like, who's going to take these kids? <laughs> and, you know, I, I have a big heart. I'm not going to lie. You know, I know my siblings said, I'll help you, I'll help you, don't worry. But I open up my house and I say, okay, these five kids are going to come with us. Right? Anybody ever taken care of just one kid before? They're pretty expensive. <laughs> okay? Right? Think about what one kid costs a year. I could give you the number. <laughs> Multiply that by seven. And I'm thinking to myself, well, my God, my God, listen, you supply all my needs. So here I am again, right? Because at this point, I have no savings. I've dwindled down my 401k to help with pay for different things. Now I'm starting to think I'm going to have to go into debt. And I got to put food on the table for seven kids. And here God comes again, just stepping right into the mix, right? Well, you've been here before. We're going to walk through this together. So I don't stop my tithing. I don't stop being faithful and serving God. Sometimes we had to eat ramen noodles, <laughs> right? But we made it work. My kids love ramen noodles, by the way. I don't understand why, but they love it. <laughs> okay? You know, but we worked it out, right? Because, you know, my parents' estate went through about a year's probate, so that's income I need to put out. I mean, there's, there's just things. we got to take care of them. There's other things. They need food. They need, they want to play sports. God forbid, you know, they want to do something else, right? Y'all know how much sports costs nowadays? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> right? Jesse's son is in competitive soccer, and I'm thinking, wow, <laughs> this bill is ridiculous, <laughs> right? But it's not, it wasn't about the things, it wasn't about, it was about us being together. It was about love, and we didn't always do it right. We were all, all seven kids plus myself, we were all grieving, right? And if you guys know the seven stages of grieving, anybody ever heard of the seven stages of grieving? I'm sure Sister Andrews can teach a whole sermon about that, I'm sure, okay? But you know where my grief stayed? In anger. Woo! I'm serving in every way possible in the church. The devil done took all my money. And here I am just angry. And I had to ask God to forgive, you know, just be, forgive me for that. I had to ask my children to forgive me for God. I had to really, we went to counseling for years. They'll tell you. Because I couldn't, that was my stage of grief. I was stuck there. And I had to let the enemy just, just get off my back and break that and start showing the joy and love that I had always, always expressed. So when the, when the enemy, you know, like I said, to try to devour everything, I had to go back to my foundation. I'm a financial advisor at this point. I've been helping people with their money for years. I've served, you know, 22 years I've been doing financial services. So I, I know the right things to do with your money. I just had a circumstance that was out of my control. Anybody ever had a circumstance out of my control when it feels like you just saved a little bit and then the car breaks down? What? <laughs> right? <laughs> or, hey, I just saved a little bit. Now we have a roof leak. What? Come on. I'm not, I know I'm not the only one. That every time I get it right. Whew. So, but I, I was like, you know what? I have walked this faith walk, and God had to open my eyes. You shall supply all of my needs. So I'm going to keep declaring that you're going to supply all of my needs. I'm going to keep, even when I can't see it, my bank account is zero. It might get to negative, right? I'm, I'm looking at it. Okay, I need to rob Peter over here to pay Paul. I need to figure out each and every step of the way, right? And I had to look at it and say, nope. I'm going to go back to what I know. I'm going to go back to what I teach people. You know, I, at that point, I I'd, I'd taught even Dave Ramsey's course for years. I'm going to go back to the basics. Amen? You can put up the next slide. So let's talk about it, the basics. Keys to financial breakthrough, I like to call it. So for me, it was just going back to these things. Number one, tithing. I don't have enough time to teach on that. That's a whole discussion by itself. But I realized for me it was about trusting God no matter what. No matter what. So tithing, that 10% came off before anything else. I didn't want nothing else to come out of my bank account before my tithe. 
That had to be first. Because for me, that was about trusting God. Now that, I, now that you know I trust you, God, let's work on the rest of this. So the very next thing, savings. Dave Ramsey calls it pay yourself first, right? Now there's different programs, and I'm not saying Dave Ramsey's is always the route I go, but, but that was the pay yourself first, the savings. So God was first, then myself. Before I paid any other bill, because guess what? I work hard. Anybody else work hard? So does it make sense to pay everybody else and then pay yourself last? Who earned that money? So you got to teach yourself to pay yourself first. That, that saving, savings for me, 10 to 20%. That's where that goes next, right? No debt. We are meant to be the lender, not the borrower. Amen? Come on, you are the lender, not the borrower. You are the one that should be supplying and helping and so on and so forth, right? So you got to get out of your debt. But it's not just, you're not just getting out of debt because you're meant to be the lender. You're getting out of the debt because the enemy is devouring your finances when you're in debt. There's this little thing called an interest rate, <laughs> right? And that little by little, each month, if, if let's just say it's $10,000, and nowadays these credit cards are high, right? It's like 15%, 20 I've seen 30% on some of these credit cards. So if you're paying 30% on interest on a $10,000 credit card, that means the enemy is adding $3,000 a year to your debt. Quickly devouring your finances. So you got to get out of debt. There is different ways to do that. Um, there's something we call the snowball effect. There's the top-down effect. There's so many different ways, and I'm going to get to that at the end of the service because we're going to teach those too, right? No debt, okay? Somebody say no debt. Amen. No debt in this house, amen? amen? Investments. Investments after you've built a savings, after you have no debt, then you start working on your investments. Now, we have all kinds of different, um, I'll say, uh, scenarios of what's approved and what's not approved, depending on who you're talking to, when, so on and so forth, right? I'm just going to give you my, I only invest in things that, that sit well with me, okay? And what I mean by that is I trust God, and I'm only going to put my money into what I feel like is godly driven, right? So there's companies I will not invest in because of their moral values. That's just my choice, Okay? Again, I just made a conscious decision that this is what I'm going to do. Many people don't even realize whether it's a company, whether it's a mutual fund. There are mutual funds specifically that are biblically oriented, right? We actually, there's a fund here owned out of Orlando called the Timothy Fund. They only invest based on biblical principles. So it's important. The reason that investments matter is probably something we're going through right now, a little thing called inflation, <laughs> right? So inflation is up 8 9% at the moment. Your investment's got to keep up with the cost of living. Because at some point, maybe when you decide to retire, even though I don't think I'm ever going to retire, Jesus didn't retire, why should I retire? God didn't retire, why should I retire? I just want to have a, like, what I like to call a work optional life, <laughs> okay? Maybe I don't want to work in what I'm doing, but I want to work in the Lord's work, Amen. Amen. I got other stuff I want to do. I got other kids I want to pour into. I got other families I want to pour into. I want to have a work optional life. I don't want to feel like I have to go to work, even though I absolutely love what I do. Amen. But I want to have the option. Protection. Protection is important, and we're wrapping up. Don't worry. Okay. I know it's 12. Your stomachs are rumbling. <laughs> uh, but protection. Protection, right? This is life insurance. You protect your home. You protect your cell phones, right? Who has a cell phone in the house? Just raise it up. I know they're, they're right there. They're not far. Raise up your cell phone. iPad, whatever. We spend a thousand bucks on these things, right? And then we protect it because we pay the extra $10 a month to protect it. Why not do that for your family? If somebody depends on your income, you need to protect them. Amen? There is not, listen, whether we're married, we have kids, it is so important that you have life insurance. Life insurance is not that expensive if you're just doing a term policy. Most of them are under $50 a month, if that. Many can get even lower, okay? 
But definitely, definitely, if somebody depends on your income, please make sure you have life insurance. I don't want to see one more GoFundMe page to pay for a funeral. And don't worry. I mean, I give to them. Don't, don't, I'm not going to say I don't. I do give to them, right? But my God, if we just sort of did a little bit of planning beforehand to protect our family so they didn't have to be in this situation. Because it's the worst thing to lose somebody, right? That's already hard enough. Everybody agree with me? That's already hard enough to lose somebody. But then to know that you're financially ruined because that person's no longer here. So you just compounded the problem. So protection is so important. And then last but not least, legacy planning. The Bible says that we are supposed to leave an inheritance for our children's children, right? Dr. Miles Monroe one time, I went to a seminar of his out in Tampa, Florida. You may not know him. That's okay. Very, very powerful preacher. Um, very just, just a teacher. He really is just a, a teacher, right? Love listening to him. But one year, I was sitting in a seminar, and he said, write out a 100-year plan. And I'm looking at him, and I'm thinking, I'm not even going to be here in 100 years. Why am I going to write that, that plan out? And he went right back to that verse. You have to leave an inheritance for your children's children. Beyond what you are, what happens next? What is your legacy? Did you pray for your children? Did you sow into them? That's part of your legacy planning right there. I know there's plenty of mothers in the church that we pray for our children, fathers too. I'm not saying that. I just know that a mother's heart, man, we are always praying for our kids. But step out into what is that legacy you plan on leaving them. You know, one of my things, I never wanted my children to be in debt. I wanted to make sure financially, not that I'm going to give them everything, and they know that about me. Sometimes they don't like it, but they know that about me, right? I'm not going to give them everything, but I don't want them in a financial situation that is harder. Anybody looked at the cost of rent today? <laughs> they said the average rent right now in Central Florida is almost $2,000 a month. Mo let's multiply it up. Two times 12 months is $24,000 a year. <laughs> you do that for 10 years, you've wasted $240,000 of something you don't own. You paid somebody else's mortgage, <laughs> right? But if you literally think about, and again, I think about it for my children. I would rather purchase a property for them, right? Let them, they may have to pay me a little rent for a little while, but we can figure out how to split that at some point, right? And grow and go from there. So when your children, especially mine, mine are all now college age. They're, they're talking to me about buying houses and, and stuff because they realize now that I'm not wasting this kind of money. This, this is just ridiculous, right? And my children, even though they don't like to admit it, they're a little bougie because their mother's a little bougie. <laughs> okay? So they like nice things sometimes. And so they try to live down the street from me. And I'm like, the rent down the street from me, amen? <laughs> I worked 25 years to get here, <laughs> okay? You might not want to step into that just yet, right? They don't always listen to me. I get that too. But everybody's walking out their own path. But I want a legacy for them that doesn't just include me handing over a debt when I pass away. I'm not going to give them everything, but I want them to be in a better financial position than I was, right? And I want their children to be in a better financial children situation than they were, amen? And that's biblical. The, the Bible teaches you you need to leave an inheritance for your children's children. That's biblical. You can't just think about what's happening in yourself. You've got to think about what's happening next. Amen. Amen. Was it good teaching today? Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> we can go to the next slide. Amen. So first of all, I want to say thank you for letting me share my heart, right? Because I don't feel like you can under really understand. When you hear somebody's testimony, doesn't it help you understand them a little bit better? Like, I, I was so happy to hear the Saul's family. I was so happy to hear his testimony. Not because, you know, I'm happy what happened to him, but it helps me understand him a little bit better. Amen. You know, one of the things when I first came in here, uh, he just has such a big heart. Um, just share, sharing with me, sharing with me th these things. When I think about how people share their testimony, that is how you change people's lives. I can't tell you how many times, at least once a month, I get an inbox or a call from somebody that says, hey, this mother's lost her child. 
can you give her a call? And honestly, before I lost a child, I probably couldn't have made that call. Sometimes even as a pastor, I, don't, I know you have to call everybody. I get it, right? But, but I'm sure, and I'm sure you go to the Holy Spirit, all those sort of things. I'm not there yet, but I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, right, Pastor Jones? I'm getting there, right? <laughs> okay? I study. I stay focused, right? But sometimes I just didn't have the words of what to say. But when it comes to a mother that's lost a child, I do. When it comes to being at zero in my bank account, I do. Right? When it comes to just thinking through and having a faith walk in a battle, one test after the other, I know how to help somebody through that. And so share your testimony with people. The person sitting next to you, I want you to look at somebody you didn't come here with today. Somebody you didn't come here with today. You have no idea the battle that they're dealing with right now. But can I ask you just for the next 15 seconds, maybe 30, we'll take 30 seconds. Can you just pray for them? For the next 30 seconds, that person, not that you came here with, because that's easy, okay? I want you to look at somebody you didn't come here with, because they're going through something that you may not know about. I want you to just take 30 seconds to pray for them. Just 30 seconds. Everybody go. Pray for them. Sometimes 30 seconds isn't even long enough. Hallelujah. You don't even know. Sometimes you just broke something off of their life you can't even imagine. You can't even think about, right? Because sometimes we're just going through our life. We forget to stop and pray for people, right? And I'm not talking, I'm, you know, Pastor, I know he's done such a good job these last, and he's had to challenge, like seriously, it's challenged me to stop in the middle of Walmart or stop in the middle of Publix and say, can I pray for you? Because I just feel like something's off right now. Can I pray for you? And then that person tell you, you know, I was just about to take my life until you stopped. Amen? People are going through hard times right now. Stop and pray for them. Please. Because if the people of God won't do it, who's going to do it? You are important. You are needed. We are a church. Listen, I want Christmas Florida to be like, I don't know what's going on over there at Redemption Church, but something is happening. Come on. I'm not, I can't be the only one. I can't, I don't want to be the only one that sees kids running into this place because it's a safe haven. Amen? Every one of y'all, I challenge you this week, go out, pray for somebody. Know that there's a battle that they're dealing with that you don't un may not understand, but if you could just stop and pray for them, it'll change their life forever. That's what happened to me. Some little old church lady prayed for me in church as my friend invited me. We used to literally call her the old church lady, okay, because I never knew her name. But she stopped me walking out of service one day and said, may, may I pray for you? And it changed everything in my life. Everything. Amen. 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 All right. I want to just, I know Pastor mentioned it, starting next month, on, uh, we're going to teach a, a series. So all those things that I walked through that I just talked about, going back to tithing, savings, no debt, investments, protection, and legacy planning, I'm going to break that down into how to do it. Okay? So we're, we're going we're gonna to literally teach that, not, not on Sunday. I think we're going to do it on Wednesday nights. I think we've decided. Um, and I know different people are coming also. I can't wait. I mean, I know Scott's coming. I know Pastor Jerry's coming. Uh, it's going to be powerful, right? But I'm going to kick that off with saying, okay, listen, let's walk through. How do you get out of debt? How do you just become faithful in your tithing? How do you build a solid savings plan for emergencies, right? How do you start investing? How do you do it the right way? Amen? Because I want all God's people. This isn't just about being wealthy. I promise you, I know plenty of wealthy people that are not happy. This is not just about being wealthy. This is about being wealthy in what God called you to do. God will get the glory. God will see everything through. Amen? God will be the one that really changes everything about your life. 
and whether that's in your faith or your finances, we're going to help get you there. Amen? Amen. All right, Pastor Kenwin, I'm going to give up this mic. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for allowing me to share. Thank you. Thank you. One more time, can you put your hands together for Miss Christina? Did anybody learn anything? Was that good? If you need any more information or guidance in the area of not just finances, but faith and finances, you can see her. Um, Pastor Jones, I believe your sister Kim as well is pretty good with finances, and um, you can go to her. I know some church members go to Miss Kim as well. If you need any kind of uh, assistance, government assistance, you need help paying your light bills, she has resources, and, um, and she can help you get those things done to get groceries and that kind of thing. But um, as we get ready to dismiss, I never like leaving without giving you an opportunity. If you're here this morning, you would just like us to pray for you. I don't know if it's an area of finances, an, an area where you're going through a sickness or you're hurting in some way. You can just make your way to the altar right now. We want to lay hands on you. We want to pray with you. We have ministers that are here that are, that are they have a heart that's after God's own heart. And Brother Mike, if you don't mind just playing a song as we get ready to dismiss and um, you can just feel free to come to come up. We want to just lay hands on you. We want to agree with you in prayer, if that's okay. Uh, I don't like leaving without giving you that opportunity. If you're here and you don't know who Jesus Christ is as your personal Lord and Savior, as Miss Christina has mentioned, walking through all those things in your life, and you may look for uh, somebody to depend on when, when, when we, they were told us that we were going to be pastoring Redemption Church. Uh, they said, well, one week from now is going to be your first Sunday, and that was Easter. The biggest Sunday of all of church is Easter. And so I, I got into a panic mode, and I said, well, I need a partner. I need a right-hand man. And as Christina mentioned, somebody you can trust. And Jesse is somebody that I've known for years and years and years. And I called him, and I said, Pastor Jesse, I'm going to be uh, pastoring a church, and I, I could use some help. And he came, and he came with Christina. Aren't you glad that they are here at Redemption Church, that God has sent them? God has sent them to this church for this season. We don't know how long they'll be here. They don't know how long they'll be here. But while they're here, they said, we want to pour into this church, into this community. And I thank God for that. God sent Josh and Brandy all the way from Michigan. And when they stepped in, they said, this church reminds us of our home church because we felt love when we walked in. And we want everybody to experience that love. As they came into these doors, they got pregnant. They were getting ready to go back home to their family in Michigan. But they decided to stay because of you and because of this church. And just like Josh and Saul and, uh, sorry, Josh and Brandy and Christina and Jesse, God is sending people to this church. God is sending people to this community. You all have prayed, and God is answering your prayers. But I want to let you know that God has also sent you to this church, and he's also sent you to this community because he has given you gifts. And if we will all use our gifts and we come together and we work together, we can get a whole lot accomplished for the kingdom of Christ. And so if you will just stand to your feet this morning. Brother Mike's going to sing a song, and I just want to ask you to focus your attention on Jesus Christ. Just before we leave, let's just spend a moment in his presence, thanking him for all that he's done. If you need help in the area of your finances, see people like Miss Christina. See people like Pastor Jones. I mean, God has really blessed them in a mighty way, and they are here to help. They are here to bless God's people and to encourage them. And um, as Brother Mike just sings, think about the Lord and what he's doing and what he's done in your life. Holy if you realize that you have